So welcome, uh, this is our second topic. Uh, for those who are not able to join us last week, we went through what is called uh, introduction to communication skills, and we defined communication skills. After defining communication skills, we also looked at the process of communication. We looked at the process of communication. And then we also looked at, uh, there are several things that we looked at in the introduction. We looked at the process of communication by Shannon and Weaver. I'm not saying that that is the only person who has defined communication or who has come up with the process of communication, but there are other scholars. But I find Shannon and Weaver's um, process of communication or model of communication being simple in a way, as far as I'm concerned. Somebody else will see another person's model as being better one than that one of Shannon and Weaver. So we looked at Shannon and Weaver. We also looked at elements of communication. And we said that the process of uh, communication is a process that happens very fast, that we don't even realize that it is a process. Because it is a process that is initiated by the, the, the sender, and it is received by the receiver, whereby the receiver reacts to the message, and that reaction of the sender's message towards the receiver or the reaction of the receiver, I mean, of the receiver towards the sender's message is what we call the feedback. And we said feedback can be positive or negative. We also said feedback can be delayed or immediate. We also looked at noise, and we said that noise is classified into various sections, either semantic noise, either what we call a uh, physiological noise, either physical noise and also um, we, uh, and also what we call, uh, we, we said semantic, physical, physiological, and the other one is mechanical noise. We looked at all those noise and we defined them. And we also gave examples of those. So if you're joining us for the first time, I think uh, when you go to the portal, there is the notes for the first topic. And there is also the recording for the, uh, for the first class. So if you'd want to learn more, or if you'd want to know what others uh, did, there are some notes there. We also say that there are some activities that are placed in every class. In every class, like today's class, there is an activity. That is a discussion forum, and there is a quiz. Kindly do those quizzes. Do those quizzes. If you fail to do these, those quizzes, don't blame anyone at the end of this course. Do not blame anyone because those quizzes are graded. It's only that you cannot see the grades. Like last week's quiz, I've already graded it. It's only that I've not allowed you to see the grades that you got. Those grades, those, Yusra, you are making noise for us. Yusra Awad, and I'll put you in the waiting room, just like Talia Winter. That's what I'm doing right now. So that is it. So we say that there are activities, the cuts and assignments. That apart from the cuts and assignments, there are activities that are usually put there, the discussion forum and the quiz. So today we are going to do quiz two ensure that you attend that quiz because I'm going to grade that quiz just like I did for the first quiz. Just like I did for the first quiz. And all these quizzes are going to be combined with the assignments and the cut. And I'm going to come up with that final grade for the assignments and the cut or for the coursework. So, Olewako, wewe ambaye, kuna sema ya kwamba mimi sitafanya hizo quiz, has you has you mahali? You will be there to blame yourself. And I'm starting from day two. I mean, from day one. I started telling you from day one, and I'll tell you until we are done with this course. The last topic. 
so that when you are graded, you are fully aware of what you uh, of what you want, of what you expect. Usipofanya hizo assignment, tutarudia tutanipata tu hapa, tutarudia hii course tena na wewe. Tutarudia tu hii course tena na wewe. And I'll be very grateful because I'll be sure kuna yule ambaye already kuna moja, we have another student for the next semester. So that is it. So today, unless there is a question, unless there is a question, I want to start my class. So there is no question. Nyampura is saying she's unable to see, to hear me. Let me confirm. Yes, Wamboi Kenyanju, you have a question. Can we have a question? Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask last time. Yes. Uh, time time got out before I finished the quiz and I posted it. So what will happen? Now if time get uh if you are got if you are caught up with time, then mm -hmm. you should be a very good good time manager. Because I gave you approximately two hours to complete that. Approximately two hours to do that. So if you're oh, caught okay. up with time, next time work hard to manage your time. Okan, okay. Alan, you have a question. Alan Okang. Alan is not talking. So we have we can have Diege Odiambo. Yes, Mr. Maina. Yes. Uh, last time we had we had a challenge on posting of the question uh, in the discussion forum section. What was the challenge? You know, there is the quiz part and the discussion section uh, section. So can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, so it, it will be at least uh, great if you explain how one will load the uh, the answers or get the discussion forum plus the quiz. That one section. will be done later. Okay. Any other question before we start our class? No question. So let's, uh, let's start our class. And I'll start my class by sharing the screen for those who are seeing. Kindly ensure that your microphone is up throughout. Keep keen, your microphone is on. I can see, ato ukifanya na mnagandi, ni naona microphone yako ikiwa on. That's why I am the host. So if your microphone is on and you make to ask noise, either knowingly or unknowingly, I will put you in the waiting room. And you will stay there until next time when we'll be having our a class like this one. So that is it. So let's let's con let's start. Uh, let me start my class by sharing the screen. Hope you can see my screen, all of you. I've already shared my screen. I hope you can see it. So that is uh, our topic. This is topic two, and it is known as this. Uh, it's known as uh, oral communication. And maybe we can have. No, I don't want to have somebody because it is already defined there. Uh, when you talk about oral communication, oral communication is simply communication through the word of mouth. Oral communication is communication through word of mouth. Kindly give me a minute, let me check on something. Yeah?
oral communication we are saying it is communication through the word of mouth oral communication is also referred to as verbal communication oral communication is also referred to as verbal communication and this is the primary form of human communication for you to distinguish an animal and a human being one thing is that human beings are able to communicate they are able to speak they are able to speak animals cannot speak animals cannot speak kama uko na mnyama ambaye anaongea then that is abnormal we cannot have an animal speaking but they communicate animals communicate but they cannot speak they communicate by producing what is called sound like if you want to know that a cow is hungry there is a frequent sound that it produces it it produces if you want to know that a dog is hungry there is a certain sound that it produces or whether it is sick it communicates through producing a certain or a specific sound but human beings do not produce sound they communicate now that is the distinction between human beings and animals so this is the primary form oral or verbal communication is the primary form of human communication it is the use of what we call spoken language that gave human a great advantage over the animals i have seen some people training animals to speak including dogs including chicken and so on and so forth and if you doubt me maybe you can look at uh, americans got talent you will see these things happening you will see a dog singing but it is a sound that is put in a way that it looks like it is singing but it is only producing what is called sound those who don't know just go to youtube not now later americans got talent and there are so many activities that are there so human beings communicate animals communicate by producing sound so that is the dis the distinction between the two and therefore there are what we call advantages of oral communication advantages of oral communication we are going to look at various advantages then from there we will look at various disadvantages of oral communication number one advantage it is a learnable and improvable human activity oral communication or verbal communication is a learnable and improvable human activity what do we mean by saying it is a learnable and improvable human activity that the way we communicate the way we talk the way we dress because we said even the way you dress the first lesson that we had even the way we dress the way we sit the way we walk the way you stare at someone the way you touch someone the way you hug someone communicates a lot so it is a learnable and improvable human activity that it is as far as oral communication is concerned we can be able to do what to learn and improve the way we communicate some of us here are not eloquent enough but by the time you are done with your university education you will have learned some things and even how to pronounce some words and even how to present uh, maybe a discussion or even present a speech so it is learnable we learn how to communicate we learn how to i mean we also have learn how to improve our communication or our oral communication secondly we are saying that it is more accurate or it is a more accurate word it's a more accurate reflection of thoughts and attitude of the speaker that if i want to know your attitude i will just let you speak if i want to know your thoughts i will just let you speak there is a saying that says out of abundance 
out of abundance in the heart, the mouth speaketh. Kama unamchukia mtu zaidi, utajipata tu siku moja umeongea hiyo maneno. Huh? So it is a more reflection. When somebody speaks to you verbally or orally, it reflects of their thoughts and attitudes. If you talk to me, you call me, and I'm listening to you via the phone or over the phone, I can tell your attitude and your reflection. So it's very good. Oral communication is very good. Thirdly, we are saying that oral communication creates and sustains warm interpersonal relationship or interpersonal relationships. If we want to create a, a relationship, I think through communicating by word of mouth, you are able to create a relationship. Like today, we have various groups here. We have CHTM, we have uh, CJMS, and we have uh, CIT groups, and among many others. Eh? And maybe you have met in a physical class. How did you create that interpersonal relationship with them? Because we said also last week that communication can be interpersonal, intrapersonal, or it can be a group communication those who are reading notes and those who have those notes. He said that uh, communication can be classified into three, intrapersonal, interpersonal, and group communication. So interpersonal is communication between two or more people. You created a relationship with your classmate. You created a relationship with other friends. Eh? Through what? Through communicating, through talking, through verbal, communication. That fourthly, oral communication usually combines what we call sight and sound. Sight is to see, uh, refer, comes from the word seeing, and sound comes from speaking. When you speak, there is that sound that you produce. Eh? So it combines sight and sound, and therefore it helps somebody to benefit from both verbal and nonverbal stimulus. Like for example, if I know if I want to know that you're lying to me, I'll just look at you on the eyes. And I'll maybe you are saying some words, but when I look at you in your eyes, I can see that maybe I can be able to tell whether you are telling the truth or you're telling lies. So it's a combination of sight and sound. Uh, verbal communication is a combination of sight and sound. Point number five, oral communication allows for instantaneous exchange of ideas. Like you can interact and get information very fast. Like if you ask me a question right now, you'll get an instant what? An instant answer. You'll get an instant information or an instant feeling and attitude. Then point number six, it enables participant to do what? Participant, remember these are people that are interact with the, with the community. These are people that communicate. These are two people that are communicating with each other. So it enables participant to seek immediate clarification whenever in doubt. So whenever you're in doubt, you can seek immediate clarification. Whenever you are in doubt, you can seek uh, immediate uh, communication. Awanjiro, Wamboi Kenyanjui, and Okang Alan. Your hands are still lifted up. So drop is of record. Ama Amujui, or drop here. Your hands are still up. You don't know how to drop those hands. I can still drop them for you. So that is the best thing about being the host. You can do everything that the others are doing. You have all the all the powers. 
So it enables participants to seek, to seek immediate clarification whenever in doubt of thought or meaning. Maybe there is something that is not going right and you want clarification. Maybe I've given, uh, maybe I've given an assignment, but you want to find out how this assignment will be done. You can still talk to me, call me on the phone and you can still ask uh, in a class and I'll, be, and, and I'll be able to do what? To clarify. The next point is the last point, but not least. microphone This is Duncan Oziambo. Duncan Oziambo, see you in the waiting room. Also, Kovi Kaari, see you in the waiting room. Kovi Kaari, you in the waiting room. So I'll be putting you in the waiting room if you cannot put off your microphone. Point number seven, we are saying, it improves for, uh, it provides uh, for instantaneous. Step three. See you in the waiting room. Another one is Talia Winter. Umerudi Talia. Sasa nakutoa ya ukoeli. They move. Ukiwe kwa waiting room, unaingia huko, una, unafanya nini? unajirudia wewe mwenyewe eh unajiita kamkutano ukiye kwa waiting room alafu unaingia with your microphone off lakini kama hujajiita kamkutano na unarudi tena microphone yako ikiwa on it's like i'm giving you a warning your microphone is on that's why you are in a waiting room then you join after joining switch off your microphone kama tali ya winter nilimweka waiting room amerudi na kelele zake sasa si tunaburisha tu nje wewe tunakurusha nje tunakwambia kaa nje sasa kabisa cha kabisa ukae huko nje kabisa tuonane next week that's what will be happening and when i throw you out hata mimi mwenyewe sina permission ya kuku allow you inside i don't have that permission to allow you inside again permission yangu inaishia hapo so usif, usifanye tufikiane hapo ama tufikishe hapo so then we are saying point number 7 it provides for instantaneous feedback thereby making it possible for the participant to access the success or failure in other words it provides for instantaneous feedback then we also have disadvantages now when you look at the advantages i'm not saying that these are the only advantages that we have you can even have various advantages of oral communication or verbal communication. You are not limited to the seven advantages that I've given you. You can still come up with other advantages. Now let's look at disadvantages of oral communication because in whatever has an advantage, it must also have a disadvantage. Number one, we have we have disadvantage number one, and it says it lacks permanence. Yes, when you talk about oral communication, it is not permanent. It lacks permanence. That's what it means. It means that when you say it, it goes with the wind, just like that, unless you record it. When you talk something, it goes just like that. It lacks permanence. And even if you have are witnesses or people who heard you speak, they might not put it the way you put it. They might not put it exactly the way you did. So they may distort, distort the information or they may add more information to the speech or to the words that you said. So that is it. So it lacks permanence unless it is recorded. Now it can be, uh, it can, you can say that it has permanence. This reminds me of my communication skills, the one that I did. 
that our our communication skills lecturer told us is a eh? long time ago, like uh, is it 10 years ago, 12 years ago. He said that if you want to abuse someone, don't start, stop writing them emails, stop writing text messages, stop recording audio clips and sending them on WhatsApp. Because if this person was to sue you in the court of law, he will use that as the evidence. Just take them to an open field. Tell them you are the biggest goat that ever lived. Mchukue mpeleke kwa kiwanja ya kucheza mpira kasarani yako katikati. Ama city stadium katikati. Mwambia wewe ni mbuzi mkubwa ambaye sijawahi kumuona. You're the biggest goat that ever lived. And nothing will happen. If this person, because there will be lack of what we call evidence. So it lacks permanence. Eh? So our point is, it lacks permanence. Number two, number two, it does not allow participants' thought, thoughts to, crystal, to crystallize. Therefore, it may result to what we call imprecise communication and even outright errors, which could be avoided in written communication. Yeah, imagine you are two friends, you are walking. Before you even, before the, uh, your thought crystallizes into this, uh, into, I mean, before your thoughts crystallizes or is crystallized by your receiver, he has already responded. Huh? That's why it gets to a point, and then at night when you are sleeping, you are thinking about what you are talking. And then unasema, hey, I didn't get it. No wonder he said those words. Sasa nimejua ni alikuwa na maanisha nini. Sazilo umekaa chini na hauyo rafiki yako hayuko. Ndi unasema, now I get it. That's why the lecturer was saying that. You see, because now your thoughts are crystallizing. But whenever, when you were together, your thoughts were not crystallizing. Uh, the thoughts, the, uh, your thoughts did not crystallize. Yani, how kufikiria, how kutilia maanani yale ambao liambiwa. Ulikuwa tunarudisha, na it was going like that. Eh? Until now, you sit down and you start to do what? To internalize the message in detail, or to internalize the message properly. The next point is that there is possibility of distortion, of the meaning. Yeah, when you talk about verbal communication, there is a possibility that somebody can distort the meaning of the information. Hmm? There is a possibility that people can distort the meaning. I remember uh, the deputy president when he said, Mexico, huh? maize in Mexico. People started uh, doing what? Distorting the message, saying, how kusema, there is maize in Mexico. He said, maize eco, maize eco. So there is a possibility of distortion in meaning. And you talk about uh, uh, what we call uh, and verbal communication, or verbal communication, people can distort the meaning. Like if I tell maybe, for example, the class rep, class will start at 2.30. The class rep might come and tell you, class will start at 3.30. So you see the meaning has been distorted already. Then the next point, it can easily be denied. Ineza kukataliwa. Mimi si kusema hivyo. I did say that. Mimi, nikasema hivyo. You stop lying. So people can easily deny what you told them. And then point number five, it has little weight as a contractual evidence. It has little weight as a contractual evidence. When you talk about contractual evidence, kama wewe ni muuzi mashamba, mauzanga shamba, mume agree na mtu atakupea 1.4 million to sell a 50 by 100 plot, just by word of mouth. And then this person gives you maybe 800,000 and tells you to memalizana. 
you will be having difficulty in showing in showing evidence ya kwamba mli agree ta kwa 1.4 million so it has very little weight you cannot use uh, verbal communication or oral communication as a contractual evidence <laughs> Oya oya Kuna watu tu wanakuanga tu adabu na wao hawana Now who is that Na na switch off microphone so that asijulikane Sema oya oya tena uone ukienda nyumbani So let's look at uh, verbal messages and misunderstanding So misunderstanding when you talk about verbal messages eh, there are various misunderstandings that comes with what we call verbal messages there are so many misunderstandings and misunderstandings happens it happens it's a way of life it's a way of life i may misunderstand you you may misunderstand me so misunderstanding is a way of life and misunderstanding is uh, comes in when we have what we call barriers to effective communication when we communicate there are usually what we call barriers to effective communication because of those barriers to effective communication or in other words barriers to effective communication are referred to as noise then you may misunderstand the sender's message and for that how do we provide i mean how do we prevent how do we prevent this misunderstanding number one, you are being told avoid avoid any unequivocal terms avoid an equivocal terms equivocal terms are terms like eh uh, let's meet on wednesday for a cup of tea equivocal terms and equivocal terms are terms that are not are not exact when I, when when you tell someone i will send you some money for lunch of course number one, you've not told that person when you will send the money you've not told that person how much you are going to send that that person you've not told that person whether you are going to send it in dollars or in pounds and you're not telling that yeah those kind of things those are unequivocal terms but when you say i will send you 200 shillings at 2 pm today for your lunch those ones are not unequivocal terms when you tell somebody Let's meet on Wednesday for a cup of tea at five. That one is an equivocal term because you're not specific. Wednesday, when, where? Those are, are in an equivocal term. So avoid such an equivocal terms because when you tell somebody Wednesday at four, and you're not telling this person when, which month, which year. This person next week atakuwa amekungojea maybe you meet at uh, cafe daily this person will be waiting for you at cafe daily and then calls you why to we agreed that we you're going to buy a, a cup of coffee at cafe daily on wednesday i'm here waiting for you then the, the, the person might tell you no i think uh, we will meet next week but one on wednesday we were not clear on this now this unequivocal terms brings about what we call misunderstanding also there is what we call the lower level abstraction lower level abstraction lower level abstraction is when for example you are using some kinds of are you using words for example you are using uh, words like these words that are, are not so specific eh? none of them came to class all of us were in class all of us 
When you talk about all of us, who is all of us? Everyone was in class. Who is everyone? Now, those are what we call lower level abstraction. So avoid such words. The next one is use of slang. Use of slang. Only I'm about to append a shell. Hmm? Avoid this language, especially if you are a student and you are listening to me. Avoid this kind of language. Avoid Sheng completely. Sheng will put you in a very awkward situation. Now, this reminds me when I was in high school, not high school, but university. I came to realize that was so much into Sheng. Everything we were talking with my friends would use Sheng. So one day I came to sit down and I asked myself, now that I'm a student and I want to apply for jobs, I want to start applying for jobs. If they call me for an interview and they ask me a simple question, like tell us about yourself, how will I respond without using any word in Sheng? Now this is intrapersonal communication. So I had an intrapersonal communication and I started, eh? my name is so-and-so. And I could barely make a sentence or I could barely come up with a clear sentence without a sharing word in it. So my friends, if you're using slang or sheng, I'm not telling you to stop using it, but let me tell you from my own opinion, refrain from sheng refrain from Sheng completely, because it is going to make you lose a lot of things. I remember there was a time I applied for uh, a job and there was a certain circle that wanted public relations officers, assistant public relations officer. So I applied and I was called for an interview. And the first, after they asked me a question on, um, I mean, the first question, they, it was, tell us about yourself. And I did it very well in English. We went to the second question, did it very well. I, we went to the third question, and the third question was, suppose you meet a customer at the gate. This customer doesn't know English. He doesn't know. He only knows Kiswahili and mother tongue. Can you sell our product? using Kiswahili. And I know very well here, we have people who can barely speak fluent Kiswahili. So happened yo nilipatikana. Kiswahili sijui, Kiswahili na chokijua, lazima kiwe ni kinashegi, ni Kiswahili ambacho sisa nifu. So happened ipo nilipopatikana. So my friend, if you are here, eh, we have two national languages, English and Kiswahili. So make sure that, you understand these two languages, and especially when you are having your intrapersonal communication, be speaking to yourself in Kiswahili and English, because these two languages, you, you, you don't know what, might, what you might come across uh, in the interview. And because they know so many people don't know Kiswahili. Apart from that, there is, a, there is this recruitment that was being done in the government, uh, the JSC recruitment. There is this lady who was told to explain or to tell, I mean, to show how he can conduct a campaign in Kiswahili about maybe uh, what we call, uh, is it JSC recruitment or it was uh, this one of uh, the commission, the IEBC commission. I think it was the IEBC commissioners, the one that were, the one that was done just the other, the other man. This lady was told, can you explain to us how you are going to conduct a campaign on awareness, on IEBC awareness? She was told to speak in Kiswahili. And in between, Akasema Mimi Siwezi Yongea Kiswahili, kwa sababu, all my years have been speaking English. Now that is where uh, tutapatikana tukiwa wengi. Eh? Tunawambia mimi siwezi kuongea kiswahili. Wewe ni nani? Na wewe ni mkenya. 
na hata na hata tukikwambia ongea mother tongue bado itakuwa na words za Kiswahili na English na sheng ndani yake so wewe utaongea language gani mimi ninakusaidia tu so kama unajua wewe lugha yako ya Kiswahili ime <laughs> ni ya kubambanya bambanya eh tafadhali wako ni wa Kiswahili if you know your english ni ile ya kubambanya bambanya wako ni start now because charity begins at home bambanya bambanya so kuna huyu jamaa anapiga kelele na huyo tutamtoa nje na we make sure that i communicate that to your hob because you are being disrespectful you are not in class and you are not kindly if you hear this person niandikie tu hata kama ni just write something write something or a note just communicate me in pri- communicate to me in private this person needs some discipline and it is not the first time this is the second time he is doing that you are taking advantage that we are 104 and you speak and then you leave so tafadhali kama mnaweza kupata huyo ni nani inbox me inbox me i will take the necessary action I will take the necessary action and also he will receive some disciplinary action from the HOB because this is very bad this is a class and you are shouting wherever you are shame on you sijaweza kukupata vizuri lakini usijaribu tena you go smoke your things and then you come and uh, you try to, to to make the class appear like a market that one i'm not going to allow that to happen and those whose microphones are on switch them off gikovi kaari your microphone is on and also anjiko maruge your microphone is on switch them off So that is it. So we go to another uh, way of in which we can uh, we can avoid misunderstanding, nonverbal uh, verbal misunderstanding is use of jargons. When you're using jargons, use them judiciously. Use those jargons judiciously. Like uh, when you talk about jargons, these are words that are technical words that are used by various professions. Like if you come to media we have our own jargons technical words when you go to those who are practicing law they have their own jargons when you go to bankers those who are practicing to become bankers or accountants they have their own jargons so when you're using these jargons especially if you're using them to bankers it is okay but if you're using a law jargon to people who are doing hospitality they might not understand you so communication becomes becomes a, a problem it becomes a problem so use jargons judiciously judiciously simply uh, it simply means that when you are using them you already know that they know what you are talking about don't use a jargon that we have ever we have never had eh? because you are not going to communicate at all at all so
So then we go to something else uh, on working on your verbal communication. Working on your verbal communication. I'm using different colors. Uh, the yellow is this simply for the topics and I'll be highlighting in blue or whatever so that you can see wherever you are. Eh? Working on your verbal communication. That as you set out to communicate verbally, you'll be more successful if you use words that have the same meaning. Uh, if you use words that have the same meaning to the person you're communicating to. So for you to improve your verbal communication, you will need to consider the following. You will need to consider the following. For you, especially as the speaker, for you to use verbal communication, consider what you want to say. I've told you so many times to switch off your microphone. But how is key to another next week? So, uh, for example, you need to consider what you, what you want to say. So, when you are involved in what we call one on one communication, you often have a chance to clear up misunderstanding. Like, if I'm talking to, say, for example, I'm talking to Wawir and Geva, eh? one on one. Of course, I know what I want to tell her. Hmm? And when I want to tell her, I will make sure that whatever choice of words that I'm going to use are not choice of words that are going to, to make her do what? That are not good. I mean, th that those choice of words eh? and the nonverbal cues that I'm going to use are not going to make her angry or make her misunderstand. Like, for example, I can tell you, come but I'm showing you go with my hand. Nakwambia kuja na mdomo, lakini na mkono nakwambia nenda. So you need to know what you want to say for you to use the right words. And you need to know how to, how do you want to say it? How do you want to say it? So once you have figured out what you want to say, you must choose the language that you're going to use. So if I'm going to speak to someone and I know what I want to say, then I must choose the language that I need to say or to, to use. It is also important that you determine to what extent you have to define the terms you have used. So when you use the language of abstraction and emotion, you must be very careful to define your language from your point of view. So make sure that you know how to say what you want to say. And then you need to know whom am I speaking to? So you want to speak to a lecturer. You know what you want to say. Maybe you want to say about an assignment that you did not do. That is what you want to say. You want to speak to a lecturer. Hmm? You have already figured out how you want to say it but you're speaking to the lecturer. So the way you speak to your friend is totally different to the way you will speak to somebody who has a higher authority than you, to the head of department. It's not the way you, the way you speak to your two year old or three year old. It's not the way you're going to speak to the head of department. The way you speak to your mom in mother tongue, you're not going to use I mean, you're not going to speak to your head of department who is a lawyer in mother tongue. You'll be considered mutu ambaya mekosa nidhamu kabisa. So kuna ile language tunatumia na kwa wakati mgani. Na hawezi tumia English to your, to your grandmother. Huh? Unataka kumuambia uh, ya kwamba unataka kwe, uh, uh, something. You want to give a story to your grandmother. You don't use mother tongue. Unless your, your grandmother is a sophisticated one. Hmm? Your grandmother is sophisticated. By sophistication, I mean Nimutu Ambaye is, is, is a person who has grown in town. He knows so many things. He's educated. 
and he speaks English. And uh, even the mode of dressing, when you look at that woman, is a sophisticated one. Unless that is your grandmother, then you can speak English to them when you're giving stories. But to kiongea na wale ambao tunajua tu mahali tumetoka, mashambani kule, ambao tunalima viazi, mahindi, eh? unataka kuongelesha mama yako na English. Na unajua pia pia ile darasa ambaye alifika, alifika standard 2 ama standard 3. Eh? And you are coming up with a very conk English. You want to uh, to massage her with the conk English that you have. Anyway, that is it. Eh? Again, meta messages. So meta mess when you talk about meta message, is the meaning apart from what the actual word expresses. Eh? So sometimes you might have, or you might you might have had a conversation that made you feel uneasy. The words all sounded right, but there was something also on. There was something also going on. Hmm? For example, you are in a meeting by a branch manager. Hmm? So the CEO introduces all the managers except maybe you. So the manager assumes that this was a simple oversight. So the manager will assume that it is a simple oversight. So this might be wrong because Maybe he was fired. Other managers might assume how to mention Nule branch mingine branch manager wa company fulani. Na waone ha hii ni kusahau tu. It might not be a simple oversight. It might be maybe he was fired. Something like that. So those are meta messages. Then uh, the language choice that you're supposed to use. You're also looking at the language choice that you're supposed to use. The language choice that you're supposed to use. It should be clear. Use a clear language for your message to be understood. Hmm? Use a language that is vivid, eh? and so on and so forth, and so on and so forth. So I will not look at improving your verbal styles. It is in your notes. That one you will read. But uh, we can look at what we call um, advantages and no, no, I will, I will not look at that. Eh? Let's look at... Uh, Improving your verbal styles. Let, let us just look at improving your verbal styles. So how do you improve your verbal styles? Number one, increase your vocabulary. Increase your vocabulary. That when you hear a new word as a student or as a person, try to understand that new word in its context. Try to understand the new word in its context. Context is simply an environment. That that word was used in a particular environment. Say, for example, in this class, if I say, kuna ngombe hapa, wanatusumbua, what would that mean? Kuna ngombe hapa, wanatusumbua. Hmm? Somebody answer me that. In this class, this is a class context. If I say there are some uh, cows, let me put it in Kiswahili. Kuna ngombe hapa wanasumbua. Mwangi, Leon, nitakuwa na maanisha nini? Mwangi, I've given you an opportunity to speak. Odhiambo, what will, I, what, will, what will be my meaning of the word ngombe? Your meaning would be there's some people who have same behaviors like that one of a cow. That's what uh, <laughs> uh, our friend is telling us. Somebody else, that is Odhiambo telling us that uh, there are people who have behaviors of the cow. Yes, Anyango, Onyango, a word. 
Nitakuwa na maanisha nini? Aworo nyango. Wafula wa bwire. Yeah, they resemble the same character like that of a cow. Benson Mwangi. People who are not in class. <laughs> People who are not in class. Cecilia and Bive. If I use the word ngombe, nina manisha ya kwamba, you are very stupid. We are stupid people disturbing us. That's what it means when I use it in this context. But nikiwa mahali kwa kiwanja niseme, kuna ngombe wanasumbua. Ninaishi mashambani. Kuna ngombe wanasumbua sana hapa. I would just, I mean the cows, the, the animals. That's what I mean. But when you use words in different environment they mean totally different things ama kondo nikikuita kondo sasa hapa hivi itakuwa na maanisha wewe ni mtukutu ama wewe ni mkaidi lakini naposema kondo nikiwa uwanjani niseme zile ni kondo itakuwa na maanisha wanyama that's what it means so increase your vocabulary when you hear a new word Try to understand it in its context, in its environment. So as you listen to politicians or as you look at adverts, eh, try to uh, also try to speak to, pro, uh, to pronounce these vocabularies when you are alone. Again, adapt your oral language. Adapt your oral language or adapting your oral language. So as you talk to people, become conscious of them as particular individual for whom you need to adapt your message. Become conscious of, of them. Note the language environment in which your conversation is taking place. The language environment. Unajua environment. Like for example, you get into a boardroom. Hmm? If you get to a boardroom, a boardroom, when you look at even the way it is arranged, there are leather seats, a very big, a very long table. Eh? Kuna meza moja imeka ukombe, na kuna viti zimepa. Even the design, the way you look at, when you look at a boardroom, that is not where you are supposed to talk sheng. Eh? Na sheng yako yote, na salang yako yote, na peleka pali. No. A boardroom simply signifies official. So if you're called for a boardroom, whatever boardroom that you'll be taken, I'm a pereka uyo mgeni boardroom. Where you are hapo ni kizungu inaongeo. Ama luga ya taifa. Ambayo ni sanifu. Ndiyo itakue inaongeo mahalipari. So a boardroom is an environment that tells you properly this is not a mother tongue place. This is not a sheng place. Huh? Ato unapoingia tu, maybe umenda kuvisit rafiki yako ama baba yako kwa ofisi. The environment itself tells you, kama munapenda kuongea mother tongue na baba yako ama na mama yako, iyo mother tongue wachi uko kwa mlango. So your mother might be speaking to you in English and you might be wondering, hey, mami, wani unaniongelesha English? It's because he is in a business environment. Hapa si nyumbani, hapa ni kazini. So adapting your oral language. Look at the environment. The environment can tell you, hapa tunaweza ongea kikui. Hapa tunaweza ongea sheng. Hapa tunaweza hagiana. Kama ndugu na dada. We can hug. Here we can kiss. Hmm? The environment tells you. And then we also have breaking bad habits. Breaking bad habits. And you're told, although someone may tell you that you are making language mistakes such as poor grammar, somebody can tell you, my friend, Otieno Award. Huh? You, are, you have, I'm just giving an example. Huh? Someone may tell you that you are making language mistakes. Hmm? That is not how we pronounce that word. 
So you will probably find it hard to correct yourself. Hmm? Sometimes you might find, you might get it very hard to correct yourself because you are so accustomed, you are used to it, hmm? to talking that way. Hmm? So if you are also in an environment where mistakes are constantly being made, it is even more difficult. So if you are in an environment or you work with frustrated friends, hmm? but English fluently. Eh? Nisheng hmm? throughout from morning to evening. Sheng. Eh? Break from those bad habits and you will see your grammar changing. Your grammar changing, your way of presenting things changing. Eh? Eh? So if you work with frustrated friends, unless you motivate them, unless you motivate them unless you show them the right way, then they will show you the wrong way. The only two things that might happen when you work with frustrated <laughs> friends, is either you show you them the right way or they will show you the wrong way. And that is it. So I break the, those bad habits. You know very well, you don't pronounce the word for uh, some words properly, like sophisticated properly like quagmire properly. Eh? You don't pronounce them properly, but the environment that you are in is making it worse for you. So there is no way you're going to become profi uh, pro, uh, proactive and uh, there is no way you will uh, there is no uh, so in other words, we are saying that you have to change your friends. Change the way they think or they will change you. They will change you and so on and so forth. Again, you must know that there is something called time. Kuna wakati wa kila kitu. Usiseme ya kwamba mimi sheng, siku moja tu nita, nita itoa tu. Iyo language, that bad habit. One day I will come and do away with it completely. There is time for everything. And when you do things the right, the wrong time, they are going to do what? Those things will are going to affect you. Like for example, umesha kwa mtu mzima, you are 35 years, 40 years, but do not care sheng. Where you are to your sheng, how tawa you watch? You eat, how tawa you watch? Nasa you mepata kazi nzuri, nazi mekua ziki, enda tu hivyo kwa sababu wewe mwenye kuongea kiswahili sanifu wa ma English sanifu, ime kushinda. So that is it. Unless there is a question, me, I will stop at that point. So those are what we call um, improving your verbal style, how you communicate. And we have said number one, adapting your oral language. Adapting your oral language. As you talk to people, become conscious of them. Hmm? Become conscious of them as you talk to them. If you're talking to your mom, become conscious. If you're talking to your friend, become conscious of them. Note the language environment in which your conversation is taking place. Umendo kakuta mama yako kwa ofisi yake. Become conscious of other people. Stop talking mother tongue. Hmm? Language yangu washena ndo uma hapo. Diyo muna ongea hapo na githeri. No. Take, be conscious of the people around you. Hmm? Na high five, muna pigana ma high five hapo. Kikuyu na ndiyo munaongea na nguvu. Ama mmetoka upande wa nyanza na eh? Eh, mmesha anza mabela, hizo mabela inya and all those things. Eh? And it is an office environment. So become conscious of the people around you. Secondly, you have said break the bad habits. Break bad habits. Eh? Breaking the bad habits is that we are saying stop having I mean, you know you pronounce words badly or wrongly. Work on your grammar. Start now pronouncing them properly, even if it's going to take you 
uh, a lot of time. And that is it. And also increase your vocabulary. Any new word that you learn, try to understand what it means in its right context. And try to use it in a sentence or some, I mean, try to construct sentences and start using those new vocabularies. And by so doing, you will improve your verbal style of communication. So I will stop there unless there is a question. Any question? Question. Yeah, there is a group that I formed, a WhatsApp group. I hope we are, uh, let me see how many we are in this group. For those who are joining us for the first time, this group has how many students? We, have, we are 62, still the way we are. Now I will send a link for you. I will send this link so that those who have not yet joined that group, kindly join that group because, uh, because uh, that is the link that I'll be using to communicate in case of anything. So I've already shared the link with you. No, I think I've shared with, uh, with, with a person, I've uh, shared with a person directly direct, I've done a direct message to a CPSM student. So what I'm going to do, let me share with everybody. Yeah? So I've shared the link there. So if you can see that link, kindly start joining that group, join the group because that is the group that I'll be using for official communication because we are a mixed group. We are a mixed group. You may share your link. I have seen some people have started joining. Already five people have joined. Already five people have joined. My friend, you have to be, you have to be updated there. Yeah? You can see, I can see some people are joining. All these people are joining. They are joining, yeah. I can see some people are joining. I've shared my screen so that you see anything that you put there, I can see any communication that is put there is visible to me. So I can see some people have joined. Let's join that group. And those who are, who are in various groups, like maybe we are in CJ, CJMS, if we have the class rep, communicate or share that link to other CJMS students. If you are doing CBM and you are the class rep, or maybe you are a, uh, you're not a class rep, send that link to others who are doing communication skills to join that group. Make sure that they are doing communication skills to square na watu ambao wanna join two group to eh? something like that. Eh? Uh, again, eh? somebody was talking about, uh, before I go there, let me do something. Uh, before I get there to, to what we call uh, attendance. Yeah, today's topic two. So today's notes have been unleashed. I've opened the notes for today's class. Then apart from the notes, there is a reading activity there. Read any other supplementary reading material, outlining nonverbal, is it nonverbal? Verbal communication, outlining verbal communication. Not nonverbal, but verbal communication. Let me edit this. Verbal communication. Outlining verbal communication. So I have given a, what we call it? A uh, learning activity is read. Uh, learning activity one is reading. So you just go to the library. On the portal, you can see an online library. And then, if those those who are in the campus can go to the library, and there are some communication books that you will get there. There is Salemi, 
And there is also another small book that is in the library for communication skills. And then uh, there is what we call uh, activity number two, discuss the differences between denotation and connotation. That one is in the notes. The notes that I've just unleashed today, there is something to do with the denotation and connotation. So you will read and then attend to the discussion forum, discuss the differences. And then the discussion forum is already opened. I will show you how we do it. No, let me just go to the discussion forum and I will share it with you. Uh, let me share the screen. For those people who have joined us today, uh, there was a concern on how do we post uh, to the discussion forum. So I'm sharing my screen so that you can see how we share to the, dis how, how we contribute to the discussion forum. Now, this is my discussion forum. Mine might not look like yours. Eh? So what you do, on the portal, you will see discussion forum. On the portal, you will see discussion forum. So you click on the discussion forum. Once you click on the discussion forum, this is how it appears. There is discussion started by David Miner. Uh, the last person who posted was David Miner. Actually, it is me who has started the discussion. So you click or here where you see 16th September, 2021. Once you do that, you're going to see something of the sort. You're, so, you're going to see the discussion forum forum. You will see the forum for discussion. Then from there, you can see the question, discuss the differences between, the, the uh, differences between denotation and connotation. So then what you do, you reply. You will come to the reply button. Once you click on the reply button, you can either write, you can either write, uh, you can see I'm typing, you can either write there, or I think uh, you can only write, you can only write, you cannot attach anything. Then after writing, you post to the forum, post to the forum, then your discussion will be posted. Any question? That's how you, can, you do it when it comes to discussion forums. Those who are not able to join my class last week, let's discuss this sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes in the course of the, in the course of what? In the course of uh, the semester. Wale ambao unajua ya kwamba haujaweza ku post discussion forums. Or let's do let's do this. I'm going to open those discussion forums immediately after this and I'm doing it right now. Itazifungua sasa hivi. So if you know that you did not do those particular assignments, not those particular discussion forum for last topic, I'm adding you one more time, one more chance. I'm adding you one more chance. So nita end a topic uh, discussion forum ya kwanza and yo hi. Topic one, discussion forum number one. So I'm adding time for you. Let me add time for you so that you can availability. So nita ifunga sa angapi, ita jifunga sa kumina, mo, sa kumina moja. Leo nita renga, pileo ni shirini na moja. So I'm adding time for you. For those who are joining us for the first time, you can go to those discussion forum and attempt them. That is discussion forum, nime kuongezea wakati. Na pia nina kuongezea wakati kwa quiz, quiz one. Quiz one, nina kuongezea wakati pia kwa quiz one. Let me add time for you on quiz one until five. Paka saa kumi na moja. So tarehe ni shirini na moja. I'm adding new time. Remember, I will be degrading all these activities that you are doing. So I've already added new time for those who are not there. And if there is a question, and if there is a question, Brian or Moeba, you have a question. 
and Benson Mwangi. So Benson, what is the question? Uh, for me, it's I'm Brian. asking about. Hello. I can hear you. The password, the password of attendance. I have not gotten there. I'm coming there. Okay. So another person is uh, Jerry Modoni. Modoni? Modoni Anna Swali. So uh, let's do this. Eh? Uh, yes, yes Modoni. Just asking. Yes. And uh, what about the activity that you've given the activity one? I was unable to submit. I so have already opened them. I have opened those activities. Thank you. And you switch off your microphone kindly. There's a lot of noise happening there. I'm a little bit of inaoshua. I'm a little bit of a I don't understand. So again, uh, let's go to the marking of the register. I've opened all the activities. Activity one is reading activity. Activity two is a discussion forum. And it, it reads like this. Eh? I think I've opened it. Yeah, the activity one, uh, activity, is it? Wait a minute, this is topic one. Let's go to topic two. So topic two, there is activity two, where we have talked about, uh, discuss the differences between connotation and denotation. And I've said that one is in your notes, the ones that I've just unleashed. And then there is quiz two. So you do quiz two, the remaining time. Finally, finally, there is assignment one. Tafadhali nataka unisikize vizuri ikifikia assignment one. This one is asking whether I can post the assignments for you. It is in the portal. I cannot post it for you. Go to the portal. Do it. Now, we have assignment one here. This assignment, I'm not saying that you do it today. You have two, exactly two weeks to do that assignment. Nimeanza sahai kukwambia. Kwamba assignment one, inafaa ifanywe by tarehe sita. You can see from... 21st. Today is 21st to 6th October 2021. Your assignment tafadhali uifanye between now na tarehe sita. Uneza amua kufanya next week. Uneza fanya, amua kufanya next week but one. Lakini uifanye between 21st and 6th of October. Read the question. Do the question the way it's supposed to be done. Submit the assignment within the, 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 the period that you've been given. Wacha iyo tarehe sita. I mean tarehe sita mwezi wakumi inafika. Waniambia have not done the assignment. Where were you for two weeks? This assignment has been put there for exactly, in fact, two weeks, one day. Imewekwa po kwa wiki mbili na siku moja. So you have 15 days to submit that assignment. 15 days, ukona mwezi nusu, nusu mwezi kufanya hiyo assignment. So do the, that assignment, na usingoja wakati deadline imefika durante hiyo asimu kuniambia mambo ya assignment. Hapo tutakuwa sana na wewe. So that is it, unless there is a question. For today's register, let's go for today, um, let's talk about today's register. Attendance. I'm looking for password. So password ya leo ni usifikiri mwalimu anakuanga nayo ameiweka. Hiyo mimi sikuangi nayo. Iko kwa system. So that is today's password. Those who can see the password, I'm sharing it here and I'm also sharing it on uh, I'm sharing it here and I'm also sharing it on WhatsApp. I've shared here, and I'm also sharing it on WhatsApp. That is the password for, the, for today's register. So make sure that you tick your own register. 
I've shared it on WhatsApp and I've also shared it on this particular platform on the chats. Now people are still raising their hands. Assignment Mutavanya Zangapi. Amboy Cynthia, any question? That's a one. Yeah, that is one. Okay. Bina Harrison. Bina. Bina, I have come to the Bina is a CHTM. Harrison, you are here. Bina, come up to the respond. It's Bina Harrison here. Yeah. Yeah. Good. You are a CHTM. Or when you're you nanisa idea could you jawa to your group, city of thank you, Bina. So if you can make nonsense hapo bina na kutoa. Na usikuja hapo ukilia machozi kwa hiyo WhatsApp group. Ukifanya makosa, bina will choose to do what? To throw you out. And when you come here complaining, me will just do what? Tutatoka hiyo group, to form ingine, na tukuache wewe ukue admin wa hiyo group. Uji, ujifanya nini? Uji, ujitawale kwa hiyo group. Tutaform ingine tutoke sisi wote. Tukuache wewe mwenye kiburi na ukaidi. Ujitawale kwa hiyo group. Wamboi na muangi, muna mumeinua mikono enu juu. What is the question? Yeah, 